So the first question that I have is from Mbendula Cassandra Bae. And I've already written it down on the screen so that we don't waste time, but she says we must explain the basic principle of an AC generator and a DC generator as well as how they differ. Now I want to take you back a little bit. In grade 11, we did electromagnetic induction and we learned how it works, so forth and so forth. Then in grade 12, all of a sudden we have AC generators and motors and so forth. Already when you're working with generators and stuff, you must know that there are two that we work with in grade 12. We talk about DC and we talk about AC. Yes, they are both generators, but something must make them differ. Now, when you have to differentiate between certain things, for example, when you're talking about generators, we have AC and then we have DC, that's already a bit of a difference. And then we must also look at what makes it an AC generator and what makes it a DC generator, right? And as well as the principle in which they work with. Now, when it comes to physical sciences and chemistry, it's always important to go back and link to what law or what principle you're working towards. For an example, if you are pushing things and you are pulling things and so forth, we can always relate it back to Newton's first, second or third law, right? When things are falling down and there's gravity and so forth, we can always link it back to Newton's universal gravitational law. So at the same thing when it comes to generators. When we talk about Faraday's law, we talk about an induced current. We talk about uh, permanent magnets and so forth. So let's help Umpendula answer her question. So what is the difference between the two? Now, how I always teach my children and how we always do in class, if you have to differentiate between two things, and even if you're studying, always make two columns like this. Then we're going to write for this one and write for this one. So that even when you are writing in an exam, it actually makes it easy for you, right? So the first one, what is the difference? So now the nice thing about both of them, I'm going to write it in the center. They both use the principle of Faraday's law. This is the principle that we follow. They use the principle of Faraday. Remember, Faraday must be in a capital letter. Faraday's law. And what does Faraday's law tell us? It's Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. Electromagnetic induction. And already when we talk about Faraday's law, you must think of a coil that's spinning through a magnetic field. Remember, magnetic field will always move from the north to the south, and we are able to induce a current in this coil. So that's the first one. The principle in which it works in is Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. Please be specific. Because you can just say Faraday, but there's probably a lot of Faradays in the law, right? In the world, right? But you must be specific to which Faraday and what law. So that's the first thing that's the same. Right? They use the principle of Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. The next thing, we know when we talk about generators and when we talk about motors, there are certain things that they do differently. For an example, when we talk about generators, we talk about mechanical energy that is converted into electrical energy. And I really want you to think, if the, if the power goes off at your house and then, oh, we have no power, and then what do we do? We use a generator and then all of a sudden we have electricity. So when you I want you to think, when you have using a generator, you usually pull it and you go, and then all of a sudden you go, and then it starts working. You put in mechanical work and then it turns into electrical energy and then you can plug a kettle and make yourself a cup of tea. So we must first work hard and then we can get electricity. So that's what a generator does, whereas a motor is the opposite. So let's do this one of a generator first. So when we talk about a generator, so both AC and DC, they convert certain types of energy. So they convert mechanical energy. Remember, you must first work hard and pull it and all that stuff, and then you're able to induce the current. So we convert mechanical energy into electrical energy, because then we can put in our kettle, make a cup of tea, put in your electric blanket with the cold front that's coming tomorrow. So this is what they both do. They convert mechanical energy into electrical energy. That's the next one. Now let's move on. Now it comes to a certain thing. Now I want to look at this. Let me just open this a little bit. This is now where it differs. We have AC and we have DC. Now what does this mean? AC means, you just summarize it like this, it means alternating. This is an alternating current. And I'm going to show you what we mean by alternating current. And when we look at DC, DC, not DC the shoes, but direct current. This is direct current. Direct current. 
That's already the different types. So now with um, Pendulo's question, they didn't really give us a mock allocation of how many principles we need to name and so forth. So for an example, if a question like this was going for three mocks, then maybe you could have gotten one for naming Faraday's law, conversion of energy, and then naming these ones, right? But now for our case, because Pendulo's question didn't really give us a mock allocation and so forth, I'm gonna let, let us try name everything. So that's the next thing. We have alternating current for AC, and we've got direct current for DC. Now, let's look at what actually happens or what, what makes them the way that they are. So now I want you to remember, when we talk about a generator, we have a magnet, and I'm gonna show you how it looks. And it's very important that you know how to draw this because in an exam, they like adding a lot of spices. So we have a coil. Let me just move this quickly. I think I made it a little too close. There we are. So we have a coil. Now, when we talk about alternating current, the current needs to alternate. So I don't want you to cram this, but you will always see a drawing that looks like this, right? And then you have little things there. I'm gonna tell you what the name of the things are. And then you can put any form of resistor there. So now when we talk about an alternating current, S and N represents your magnet. And remember, they can actually put it the other way around. It really doesn't matter. And this is a coil. This is what we call a coil. And then we've got these two. Sometimes they can name this R1 and they can name it R2, but we call this slip rings. We call it slip rings. And then these two parts here, these little bits here that I've colored in, we call them carbon brushes. They are called carbon brushes. So that is when we're talking about an, an AC generator. Now, I want us to look at a DC generator. Exactly the same, but you're gonna see what changes. Again, you're gonna have to have a magnet. It doesn't really matter in which direction they put them. You're gonna have a coil. But now, what differs here is that you're going to have a split ring. So having a slip ring and a split ring is what will then differ on what makes the current AC and what makes the current DC. Let's say we also have a resistor there. Remember, when we talk about resistors, we, talk, we started learning resistors in grade 10. Again, this will represent your magnet. And I hope, I hope Bendul is watching. And then again, we have this, what we call a coil. You're gonna see everything's exactly the same. And then we have our carbon brushes, which are these little bits here. These are your carbon brushes. But now what changes when we talk about a DC generator is little this part here. Can you see I've got two rings on this side? On this side there's a, there's a slit. So it, the slit is split. So it's a split ring. So some say it's a split ring, some call it a commutator. Commutator. And this allows that the current remains a direct commutator. This remains direct. So this is the two different things. So everything else is exactly the same. We have a coil, we've got a magnet, we've got carbon brushes, but the difference now on what makes it an alternating current and what makes it a direct current is a split ring or a slip ring. So you need to see the difference. With an AC, so when this coil is turning, we find out that these little parts here of this end up touching every bit of the, of the coil that we have, which gives us an alternating current. Where in a direct current, it remains intact and it's able to spin. Now, going further to Mpendulo's question, there was also a question that said we need to draw a diagram to prove our answers. So remember what I always tell you about scientists, they like showing everything in a graph. Taking you back when we did, um, when we when we did chemistry and we had to show on, on a graph or on a table and so forth because it simplifies everything. And if we can show an AC generator as a diagram like this, we can also show it on a graph. Because we know if things are turning, we have revolutions and what, 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 we can use sign graphs to actually show how the motion is turning. So let's see how we're going to do that. Let's go into, the, let me use a, a clear one. So let, I'm just going to write AC here for an AC generator, and then I'm going to write DC for DC. So now, so in an exam, they can ask you in various ways. Let me just move this a little bit in so that you can see. They can ask it in various ways. They can give you a graph like this, and then they can ask you, what is actually happening on this graph? So I'm going to try and explain it to you. Got A, B, and remember that this thing is actually turning. If, so if it's A, B, then it turns, it falls on the other side, then A will be here and B will be here. 
and then it continues turning. Now it's going to be in a vertical motion. A will be here, B will be there, and it continues to turn, and it will lie flat like this. We're going to have B here, we're going to have A here, and it continues to turn, and it's going to be exactly like how we started. This is going to be A, this is going to be B. So this is how the coil is turning. Remember, in the magnet, between the two magnets, it's just turning it's going to look better if I do it like this. It just keeps turning like this, right? So we had A, then it was A, then A was at the bottom, then A was on, then it was a 360, it was a revolution. But now how do we explain or show that on a graph? I just want to do lines like this. So they can ask you like this in a graph to say, uh, at point what what, in was it vertical, was it horizontal, or whatever, right? So now because it's an alternating current, and the current alternates, meaning that it will change directions at every half cycle, it means it will come up and it will be there. This is a 90 degrees. Then it will flip, it will come there. And we know after 90 degrees, we have 180. This is what we did in grade nine. And then it will flip, it will come there. After 180 is 270 degrees, and it'll come all the way up, giving us 360, and that's what we call a revolution. So that's what the alternating current will do. We will have a sign graph to show how it will then turn. If the examiner wanted to spice it up, they can actually give you this graph like this, and then let's say, for example, they can call this uh, part A, B, C, D, and then E. And then they, they can ask you, draw, draw how the, the coil will be at 90 degrees or at point B, right? So they can ask you various things, but always remember, when we talk about alternating current, we use this graph to explain it. And in your mind, you must always think, okay, it's standing up straight and then it's moving. If this point is A, point A will start there, point A will be there, point A will be there, point A will be there, and then it's 360. So remember that it will turn at 360 degrees, right? And the current is alternating. Now let's look at what happens for a DC generator. So again, they can ask you in various ways in an exam, and I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. I'm just not gonna write A and B so that we don't waste too much time. Then we're gonna have a flat surface here. It's gonna come upright. It's gonna be flat again, and it's gonna come upright. The, the, the A, B that I've done on this side is exactly the same on this side. However, now for a DC, you just use a different color. It will be upright, it will come to the top. Let me somewhere just draw the line so that I don't confuse anyone for each and every segment. There we are, so it will come up. This is again 90 degrees, but remember, this is direct current. It will come up, it will come down. This will be 180 degrees, but instead of moving in the opposite direction for an alternating current, it comes back up again, and then we have 270 degrees, and then it comes back down again, now we have 360 degrees. So in an exam, if they can give you, we have two graphs for you, between the two graphs, which is an alternating current, then you must already know now it's the one that forms a sine graph because the current will alternate. Remember, in an alternating current, the current will move in different directions in every half cycle because the current will alternate. In a direct current, the current will remain the same throughout. So they can give you two graphs and then ask you to identify which is which, or they can give you one and then ask you to draw it. I think we actually have a question that's gonna show, want us to draw this. So this is one of Benulo's question. So now moving on, her last question was the basic principles of an electric motor. So this one was pretty easy. If generators convert mechanical energy into electrical energy, motors do the opposite. So what they do, they take electrical energy they take electrical energy into, let me just write out the whole thing, so I don't take chances, they convert electrical energy, electrical energy, energy into mechanical energy, into mechanical energy. And now you must always remember that when you work with generators and motors, something also that we could also add is that for one, you will use Fleming's left-hand rule and the one you will use Fleming's right-hand rule. Let's just touch base on that. You have to do your fingers like this. This is the direction of the magnetic field. Remember, it's always from the north to the south, right? In what, depending on how the structure looks. This will be the force on how the, the coil is turning, and this then will be the direction of your current. You use Fleming's uh, left-hand rule. But now, then you're gonna ask me, but Tops, how do I know when I use for which one? Now, this is something that you'll never forget. Here I wrote a hint for you, and here I've got two R's. So we have Fleming's, right hand rule. 
for two. A generator uses Fleming's right hand rule. A motor only has one R. We have Fleming's left hand rule. Please don't forget this because you find in an exam, you have you sitting there, but which one did my teacher say? Just write this out. The one with two R's, Fleming's right hand rule. The one with one R is Fleming's left hand rule. Thank <laughs> you.